I was attracted to the Panthers because they were speaking the language I needed to speak at that moment in time, as was Malcolm X, as was Stokely Carmichael, i.e. a radical language, not about turning the other cheek. If somebody wants to knock me about on the basis of the color of my skin, I am not going to turn the other cheek. I've never been a turn the other cheek kind of person. I've always, you want to slap me, I'll whoop you down. We must continue to delve deeper into the philosophy of nonviolent resistance. That is something about this method that has power. It has morality with it because it gives us the opportunity to work to secure moral ends through moral means. The nonviolent structure didn't appeal to us. We never denounced it doesn't mean other people shouldn't do it it's just it doesn't appeal to us because it um <laughs> this is how stokely carmichael put it it depends on the white man having a conscience you have to believe that there's a conscience in your oppressor for nonviolence to work well i think the country made a mistake when they killed dr king it would have been far better if they killed rap brown or myself because then they could say to black people that uh we're preaching guns, and uh, he who preaches or who lives by the sword will die by the sword. But they couldn't do that for Dr. King because he preached love. And there is no possible way for them to, to make an excuse of Dr. King's killing. Uh, so when they kill Dr. King, they just open up the eyes of uh, a lot of black people. So if I put it in, I think I put it in. Now I tipped it out, I think. In New York at this time, there is Panthers reunited. Um, so Panthers from all over the world, from Australia, from the UK, from Israel, from India, have got together um, to remember our time back in the day. who, when they were young, were Panthers, were revolutionaries, were in this moment, who had had the same dreams, who had the similar understanding and the energy that we could band together and we can change this. That's what's so exciting. Now we're grandparents. People were scared of the Panthers. <laughs> but what got less media attention was the welfare programs that the Panthers inspired. Like the Aboriginal medical services, the legal services, and the breakfast program for the kids. And that was run by the women. Kathleen. <laughs> Kathleen. How are you? Come on in my house. It's so beautiful to see you. Come on in. That's you. Okay, your name was. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you teach with um? Apanelli. Yeah, my chair. Oh, I work at Georgia State. Yeah. In the school institute of public health. And it's like all the politics and oppression of where we were as black women. Man. You know, like, we just tolerated so much in order to get the message out there. But it was so annoying to a point where we had to keep a silent code at times. In order to get the general message out there for the general white and black community. We put up with a lot of shit. We endured a lot. The women? Yeah. 
Isabel Coe, who just passed away recently, and Lana Doolan. These are the women are a bit older than me that I looked up to. I think the women at that time didn't really want to get involved with feminism. It was only small little bits and pieces of women at that time. They were more so involved with the struggle uh, or with the, the platform of the struggle, you might as say. When our Black Panther movement began in the mid-60s, it was similar in time. The women's liberation movement in the white community began and they were assuming that our pattern was their pattern that they have domination by powerful men and that women have to be liberated in this little context for women liberated from men well we didn't have that context we saw what we needed to be liberated from was racism I'm suspicious of people who undermine the party on the gender issue. I'm highly suspicious. There wasn't the imperative of that moment in history to deal entirely with the gender issue. And we certainly weren't going to divide our movement on the basis of gender. That would have been ridiculous. We were already in a mass minority. Why would you divide your forces? When you start moving, you know, getting out of the oppression that you've been under, and the men start wanting to assert themselves, you think you have to then hold back, step back, and let them go for, forward first, or what? Well, I believe that a black woman's place is behind a man. I mean, most of the men now wouldn't, the black men wouldn't, wouldn't be where they are today if it wasn't for a black woman. Black men are going through violence every day of their lives. And you women just talk about liberating uh, women, want to liberate yourselves, while uh, there's the blacks are going through violence every day of their lives. And just talk about uh, women's liberation. You know, you know, everyone has to liberate themselves. Blacks have to liberate themselves. We yeah, can't, we can't liberate that. you. And that's that's what we're that's what we're trying to say to you. We can't afford a split at the moment. And we can't liberate. Ourselves. It's the men we're pressing. Us. It's not like we didn't know that. It's not like that we wanted to be victims. We knew we were victims. We got our strength from each other. What, are we going to go to the police if they abuse us? They hurt us in any way? That's, that's a symptomatic of racism. No, the black women were making the sacrifice. Our men were already demonised by the media. If we pointed the finger at one man, they would say it was all black men. <laughs> 